Hiya folks. Leo Alderbold. Well, good few years ago now, I did a video where I ended up driving miles in a big circle all around the counties of Dorset um, and Somerset trying to find something interesting to talk about. Um, but I wasn't in the mood that day, evidently enough, because uh, I ended up giving you a waffle from the inside of my car, which I think I entitled uh, In Search of Content. That actually turned out to be quite a funny video in a way, but hey -ho. But one of the places that I thought to bring you at that time, um, but I couldn't quite find a, the right place, um, was Avalon. Avalon, the place of legend. Now, um, my original thinking was to bring you to a point where you could see um, exactly why Avalon was called the Isle of Avalon. Or why Glastonbury, rather, I should say, was known as the Isle of Avalon. Um, but today, finally, I'm bringing you to a place that's almost as good if not a little bit better. So, I'm standing at the moment in a place called Burrow Mump, um, which is wonderfully named. And uh, here's the remnants of this church here, which I think only goes back to the 17th century. Um, although there was a much older, I think, Norman church here before. Um, but the reason I came here specifically is because I, I needed to get out do something a bit different today so I've come out for a bit of a drive, a bit of an explore on the Somerset levels. So, and it's wonderfully atmospherically overcast, <laughs> very typically English for the day. <laughs> but hopefully you can see here behind me all of this flat, low-lying ground. And over there, now you won't be able to see, but exactly where my finger's pointing, uh, about 10 miles as the crow flies is Glastonbury Tor um, and everything in between basically is the flatlands it's what we call the Somerset Levels it's Fenland or it was Fenland now this is just a wonderful place uh, to me really I, I love it here I absolutely love it because um, it's a place where man or humans I should say, kind of coexists on the precipice, sort of on that, on that juxtaposition with nature. Um, and the reason for that is because all of this ground up until the 17th century, uh, everything behind me here would have, would have looked like a big marsh, um, just reeds um, and, and bulrush, that sort of thing, um, for as far as your eye can see. Uh, and especially during the winter months, impassable with flooding. Um, and it was in the 17th century that Dutch engineers actually uh, managed to, uh, to drain these lands and crisscrossing all of this landscape uh, are a series of huge drains which I, I guess in the States would probably be called levees um, which take the water out from uh, this sort of Somerset level basin if you like out into the, um, into the Bristol Channel which is over in that direction. Now, people had attempted for years and years, centuries and centuries, uh, as far back as the Romans, uh, they tried to sort of tame this landscape, but really without much success. And even with the, uh, the evident success of the Dutch engineers, who, as you can see, what we're looking at behind me now is all green, <laughs> only at the moment, <laughs> because periodically there are floods uh, which, which put all of this underwater again. Um, and, and I just find that, that, as I say, that juxtaposition between mankind and nature um, just really quite exciting. There's not many places in the UK uh, where, where human beings are, are living such a close, um, uh, in such a close kind of relationship uh, with the powers of nature. Uh, but here is one of those places now. Behind me is the A361, this road here, this runs over to Glastonbury in that direction, Glastonbury and Street. Um, and, uh, and basically all along this road and numerous of the other roads coming off it, you'll see barriers at the side of the road. 
um, and they periodically close those because of flooding. Um, because, you know, when we have heavy rain, as we're having a lot of, um, especially with, uh, with a milder climate, um, <laughs> yeah, all of these roads become flooded and impassable, so you can't really get, get through here very well. Um, and I just find it wonderful. Hopefully, I wonder if you can see uh, down down below me there. We've got this. Uh, uh, we we've got a. Yeah, we can see a small ditch there. There's another one immediately adjacent to it over there. But the really big ditches, like the King's Sedgemore Drain, uh, they're over in that direction. These things are really big. Um, well, big by UK kind of, uh, UK standards anyway. But the reason uh, why. Glastonbury is known as the Isle of Avalon is because when you look at the landscape around me um, it, it's really really flat and very low-lying you've got this ridge of hills over here um, so just over there and as I say you've got Glastonbury which sticks out like a peak with a tower on top just over there um, so back before the 17th century when this was really still <laughs> for the vast uh, majority of the time underwater um, they really they literally would Glastonbury particularly literally would have stood out like an island um, in this huge landscape of water and marsh um, which is just wonderful <laughs> so yeah um, so yeah here we are here we are. there's burrow burrow mump right behind me I really don't know much about the place itself I just sort of came up here for the view but Ah, and I'm getting arm ache. So you'll have to forgive me um, doing this on my phone. I did actually bring the GoPro out, but like a twat, I left it in the car. But there's a feeling about this landscape that's really old. Um, and uh, you can, you just get, I just get this feeling when I'm around here. It feels like a place that's almost lost in time a little bit because, you know, because there is this relationship, this very tenuous relationship between human beings and nature. Um, and it, it's, it's kind of like the Badlands. It's, it's, it's got this long history of, of people struggling basically to eke out a living in what would have really been a very inhospitable place um, and <laughs> probably to a great extent still is I mean there are parts around here which are pretty bleak and barren you know um, and there's still a lot of bog and a lot of marsh um, I'll just spin you around I'm not sure if you can see but just down behind this house here um, and running off over there there's one of the larger drains. This runs through the village of Burrow Bridge. But this whole landscape is crisscrossed with them. And it's just this story of mankind desperately clinging on, trying to cling on um, to what really wants to be a wilderness here. Um, so I just love it. I love it for that reason. It's so exciting to be here. <laughs> Even though it's not much to look at, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's flat and green. <laughs> With, uh, with lines of trees and dots of uh, osier or willow um, and, uh, and, and rush pasture and things like that, wet ground. But I, I find it just really exciting to be here. But yeah, so there you go. Um... <laughs> I may pick this video up again in a bit. I may just go on somewhere else, see if I can find something else to talk about for a bit. Um, but, um... Yeah, I really wanted to bring you up here and show you a little bit of this local place. This place is only about an hour's drive from me. Um, that's so, so steeped in history. Um, and it was through this landscape that King Alfred in the 9th century, I think, um, escaped uh, the, uh, the Vikings, effectively. Um, he came off a, and escaped uh, through this landscape um, and basically because this was such an inhospitable landscape of marsh um, they were kind of kept to that end of the to the eastern part of the country for that period of time but it's just wonderful <laughs> it's wonderful hmm we'll do a little bit of housekeeping I'm smoking 
when I'm not talking. Um, some special Latakia flake by Germain's, which I opened on camera the other day. Um, I've done a couple of videos which I haven't uploaded basically because I thought they were shite and really boring. Um, but uh, this one will get uploaded because this is a bit more interesting. It's from 2016, this tin, and I can tell you it's just the most sublime, sublime tobacco I've had for a long time. And the reason I'm mentioning it is because I likened it in this video that I didn't end up uploading to uh, being like wine and wood smoke. And I wanted to just express how good it is in that respect. This is like wine and wood smoke mixed. It's beautiful. So get some Jermaine Special Latakia Flake if you can. Cellar it for years, at least five years. Oh, you won't regret it. Now it's a shame. It's a shame you can't see on this camera as far as I can, because right over there where Glastonbury is, oh, it's spectacular. It looks spectacularly moody. Um, just sitting there in the landscape under this grey steel sky. And I wonder, hmm, I suppose when I'm up here, you know, in this part of the country, I find it really easy to feel connected with the ancestors, so to speak. Um, there's a something about this landscape and this place that makes me feel closer to our uh, yeah, closer to my ancestors, even though to the best part of my knowledge, um, none of my family are from around here. But there's something just so timeless and ancient. Um, I feel a drawing to this place, always have, always have. Mm. So yeah, that's it for the minute. Um, I may upload some content uh, to the end of this video, I may not. Kind of depends what I get up to for the day. But uh, I just wanted to bring you up here, give you a bit of a waffle about a place that I find absolutely fascinating. Um, so uh, if I don't end up uploading or tacking on some more footage uh, to this video, I will catch you later.